Hey y'all, so I am still sick. I am slightly better, but I do have a cough. I'm going to attempt to read stories and I just want to warn you guys, this video might be kind of choppy because I know I'm not going to be able to read very well. I'm just going to be coughing a lot, but I'm going to try anyways because I can't just upload TikTok videos. Like I can't do that. Did I even say I'm back? I'm reading Let's Not Meet Stories. I don't even think I said that. I just like got right into my spiel. This first story says, my cheating stalker ex, trigger warning for SA, underage stuff, which I did read a little bit into. Um, we're not gonna go into any super like heavy details, even if they're in the story. Mentions of physical abuse and suicide. If you can't handle any of that, please don't listen to the story. The next one is, I think, just as bad. But it says, hey Courtney, my name is Rin, not my real name, and I've been watching your channel for years. Your voice is so calming and never fails to make me feel so cozy. See, that's the funny thing is I'm always reading scary stories. So when you guys are like, you make me feel cozy, I'm like, how? I'm going to write about one of my exes who gave me terrible anxiety to the point of not leaving my house for weeks and the lies that he fed me. This one's long, so I apologize for any dry throats. Yeah, this might be rough, but we're going to do it. To give some context, this guy who I'll call Steve, also not a real name, I met through Discord when I was 15. He was two years older than me and used it to his advantage from the start. We first met IRL with our Discord friend group and he made it very clear he wanted to be in a relationship with me. I was young and naive and played along with it, not really even sure that I wanted it in the first place. This kind of attention was pretty new to me since I was just starting to grow out of my ugly years. I doubt you were ever ugly, but okay. When we were out with our friends, Steve would constantly hold my hand, carry my bag for me, even paid for my dinner and just generally love bomb me. Again, I wasn't used to it and I just played along. At the end of the outing, he told me he was in love with me and wanted to be my boyfriend. I, though majorly excited by this affection, was a little wary but said yes. We had another mutual friend called Jake, fake name, whom I had known before I met Steve. Jake was another issue of its own. He was three years older than me, which would make him 18 at the time, and would constantly insinuate that he wanted to get in my pants. That, I'm sorry, that's so fucking weird. Even though I was 15, I looked mature for my age and he would never let me forget it. He would make remarks on my chest, my figure, and once even said he would pay me to have sex with him. He said it in a jokey manner, but it was very obvious through that conversation and the many glances he would steal to look at me that he did mean it. Although he was a creep, I still stayed friends with him because I didn't have many at the time. Going back to Steve, we went out on a date with Jake accompanying us for dinner. That's weird. The dynamic was very strange. Okay, yeah. Jake, despite being the oldest out of the three of us, would pretend to be Steve and my kid, even calling me mommy once. Even though I was weirded out, I didn't say anything about it. Throughout dinner, Jake would take credit for getting me and Steve into a relationship since he was the one who introduced us indirectly. It kind of became an inside joke that Jake would constantly remind us of. Steve was also pretty chummy with Jake, even though he was making advances at me. A week goes by and Steve was love bombing me the whole time. He said he loved me and cared for me more than anyone else ever could. My guess is he was trying to manipulate me so I wouldn't leave him, but the constant I love yous and such made me cringe. It's also worth noting that throughout this time, he would only ever meet me at my house or outside, never at his place. He also had a habit of making me pay for his stuff. Even when we went out for dinner, he would make me pay for his food in his cab home. However, I was still dizzy with the idea of being in a relationship and I didn't question it. Steve, I hate this word. I'm gonna say it, but I hate this word. Steve was also super horny. I, I don't know why I hate that word. I'm like a full grown adult and I'm like, it's icky. Um, okay, so he was super horny the entire time and would ask me to have sex with him constantly. I did, which I regret. And while it wasn't abusive or anything, it was just not good. He would also pressure me to do risky things in public, which I did not want to do since the repercussions of being caught would result in a pricey fine or even jail time in my country. He took delight in my hesitation and once did step to me in the back of a taxi even though I kept telling him to stop. After every one of these events, he would say he loved me and he would never hurt me and just wanted me to feel good. Nothing would stop him from wanting to do me, be it at my age, my parents in the next room, or even the lack of protection. It was also apparent to me that he found the sexual aspect of our relationship exciting because I was a minor and he was over the age of consent in my country. Guess what though? After the first week of our relationship, Steve told me he was still in love with his ex-girlfriend. He even told me he was using me as a rebound. When I told him I needed some time to think about everything, he would try and say that I was being mean to him and that he still loved me. I hate this man. I did not cave this time and I didn't speak to him for a few days. During these few days, he would text me saying he loved me and beg me to stay with him. 
was actually pretty sad in those few days because I felt so betrayed and confided in my older sister about it. I finally texted him after a while and relented, agreeing to meet up with him for lunch the next day. So the next day, Steve shows up at the restaurant half an hour late with a bouquet of orchids and a teddy bear in hand. Which would be cute if you didn't realize that those orchids were used for prayers to the dead in my religion. Steve is love bombing me again at this point, profusely apologizing and even saying that him admitting his feelings for his ex to me was an act of kindness and that he shouldn't have listened to his soul urging him to tell me the truth. He was also trying to make out with me in this public restaurant with a dozen conservative older women who would throw us annoyed glances. I was also diagnosed with anxiety at the time and he knew this. He was trying to make me feel uneasy. When I get home that day, I tell one of my friends that I wanted to break up with him and this is where the real trouble begins. In that week, I was throwing a Christmas party at my house and invited my online friend group to come to my place, which included Steve and Jake. However, my parents, after finding out about what had happened, told me to never let Steve come over to my house. So I told Steve as such, and he was upset. He told me he would bring a bottle of wine over and get on his knees and beg for forgiveness from my father. I thought this was hilarious, but never said so because he was being so serious about it. I gave him a firm no and said he was not allowed into the party, he finally gave up and said fine, we left it at that, keep this in mind. On the night of the party, I was busy hosting and didn't look at my phone. To my surprise, Steve was blowing up and texting Jake for updates on me. He was asking him what I was doing, who I was talking to, and just trying to keep tabs on me as much as he could. Jake pulled me aside at the party and we both knew I wanted to break up with Steve. Jake told me that I should do what I have to do before Steve got too into me, I think it's a little late for that, though I knew he was trying to separate us so he could have a chance to flirt with me again. Later that night, my friend who I had confided in and I had a sleepover at my place. She was going to help me break up with Steve, so the two of us huddled in bed and I started texting. Started off by telling him I felt like we were too different and that I wanted to break up and that I wished him the best. He did not like this. At first he didn't believe me, then he started cussing me out, then he said he loved me, then cussed me out again. He would say things like, you're so emotionally hollow, no one would ever love you. And do you think other people would actually love you? Everyone's just looking at your body, I'm looking at your soul. He was just trying to manipulate me and it was very clear. It took him two hours to finally calm down and he accepted the fact that I was breaking up with him. He typed an insanely long paragraph and among those words was a sentence that haunted me. I waited four hours at the train station near your house for a chance I would see you today. I froze. There was no way he meant it, right? I asked him for clarification and he confirmed that he did it. I stopped talking to him at that point, putting my phone down. My friend could tell I was shaken up so she distracted me for the night by watching a few TV shows. However, throughout the next few weeks, he would send me disturbing texts about looking at me through my windows or lurking around the train station that I frequented. I spent two weeks in my house, curtains drawn and lights dim so he wouldn't see me. He never acted on his words as far as I knew, but to a 15 year old, it freaked me out. He also threatened to send people my NSFW pictures that I sent to him as a form of blackmail. My sister could tell I was very distressed and one night while I was bowling, she came into my room and asked me what happened told her everything and she was angry with Steve, even threatening to call him and scold him. Told her not to, and in an effort to help me feel better, she booked an appointment with a therapist for me. Months go by and I become friends with the ex that Steve told me he was in love with. Turns out they got together after we broke up and he verbally abused her, even telling her to kill herself and would constantly compare us. Whenever they had arguments, she would stand up to him and he would say, Rin would never fight with me like this and talk down to her. They broke up and she told me about all of his aggressions. Here's another shocking fact. Remember him saying that he waited for me at the train station for four hours? Well, he lied. He was actually at her house. You want another shocking fact? He also sent Jake my NSFW pics after we broke up without my consent. I'm 18 now and I'm friends with the ex he had after the one I just talked about. They're an amazing person but was treated way worse than us. They were pressured into having sex, verbally abused, and even slapped multiple times by Steve. I also heard Steve was caught having relations with a 14 year old when he was 19. So creepy cheater pedo ex, I hope we can never meet again. Dude, I am so beyond sorry that you had to go through that. It's just like, uh, it's heartbreaking to me because he knew what he was doing the entire time. You were young, you were vulnerable, and he's just like an absolutely disgusting, like disgrace of a human being. Like I knew it was gonna be bad, but that was really bad. And I have another one that's also really fucking, okay. We're gonna, this is a lot. I'm glad you got out of it. I'm glad you became friends with the people who also went, th I'm like, I'm glad you have that support because it's like they know what you went through. And I'm also really glad that you confided in your sister because the fact that she got you into therapy is like amazing to me. I think that's, I don't know, I love that. 
And so I'm glad you had good people in your life. You did not deserve that. And I hope you know that. This next story says, to the guy that stalked my best friend tonight and drew pictures of us dead, let's not meet again. Like what? Trigger warning, mentions of porn, sexual harassment, suicide, and self-harm. Hi Courtney, I'm Mel and I've been watching your videos for a long time. First time posting. I use shiver pronouns. My friends are okay with me posting this as it's not just my story. This all starts in sixth grade. My best friend Bella and I have been stalked by the same boy and a few of his friends. I mostly call her Belle, majority of people call her Bella. At first, Riker was very nice and had so much in common with her. Belle was going through a rough time and struggling with depression, and then he came into her life. She told me how everything made sense, and she had fallen hard for him. At the start, he seemed perfect for her, and even I, the overprotective best friend, saw him as a kind and sweet person. However, Riker and her never actually dated, but they had both made it clear they loved each other. I know this sounds so dramatic since we were only 12, but I saw it as her finding the one thing that she needed the most. But things changed in 7th grade. It started off as it was in the 6th, until Belle met Adam. Adam had never had classes with Belle and I before. He seemed cool, and him and Belle instantly clicked. She started to catch feelings for him, as Riker slowly started pulling away from her because she was too depressed. Upon finding out that Belle and Adam started dating, Riker became upset. It didn't exactly make much sense since he was pulling away, but since Riker was my friend too, I told him I was there for him since he genuinely seemed sad that he had lost his chance. Belle had no issues with this, as she still wanted to remain friends with him too. Riker got increasingly angry and said he didn't understand how she could just fall out of love like that and going on about how Adam was bad for her. While I agree Adam was a shitty boyfriend as he showed very clear signs of possessiveness and being overly controlling, I just wanted her to be happy and he made her happy. Riker got worse. He started saying how he hated Belle and never wanted to glance in her direction ever again. This really upset her. She told me, I told him I wanted to be on a friendship level with him and then he started to avoid me and started being very cold, so fuck him. He stopped referring to her as Bella and started calling her Annabella, her full name. I asked him why he did that and he said, it's because of my relationship with her and told me that she must address him as Richard, his full name. She obviously did not comply and hated how he went around calling her Annabella to everyone, but then one day in history class, he showed me a drawing he had done of Belle. It looked just like her and I complimented it. He said, that's not a drawing of Annabella. I got confused. I asked who it was and he responded with Belle. Now, I got even more confused because it was obviously a drawing of Belle. I asked him what he meant. He explained to me that this girl named Belle was living in his room. She looked exactly like Belle, but had all of the amazing traits that Annabella lacked. And it didn't take a genius to tell that this Belle was not real. It got worse since he started going around the school telling everyone he was sleeping with Belle. Our peers started to think he was talking about my friend and would come up frequently to ask her about it. Adam started threatening to beat up Riker and would frequently get into screaming fights with him. And to top it all off, as a way to get us to believe that Belle was a real person, he would follow Belle around outside of school. And then in class, he would say, I heard you were at location last night. She would question it and he would respond with, Belle was there and she told me. The Belle stories got weirder. He continued talking about their sex, but then he said he came home and Belle had cut the corners of her mouth and part of her cheeks into the shape of a huge smile. He showed me a drawing of it and I was extremely disturbed and uncomfortable. The drawing was her naked with the bloody smile. This guy had made up a completely fictional version of a girl who rejected him and he was now completely crossing the line by drawing her naked with cuts on her face. The line had already been crossed, but this takes it to a whole different level of insanity. But unfortunately, it does not end there because then he said that Belle had killed herself and he showed me a drawing he made of her dead body. Belle had become scared of him. She cried to me one night, blaming herself for his spiral. I cried with her, convincing her that it was in no way, shape, or form her fault. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have become a monster. What happened to that gentle, kind, and loving Riker I once knew? I'd never seen her feel so guilty before. What didn't help is Riker did not stop talking to me. I distanced my contacts, but even I was scared of him. He told me I was the closest girl to him now, and that I was so much more bright and bubbly than Annabella. I didn't know how to respond, but I defended her. He also told me that since Belle's passing, he got back into his major porn addiction, but his parents found out so he couldn't go on any sites. He started asking me to send him porn, and I said the most I could do is send links. He said it wouldn't work because then it would be in his web history and his parents would find out. He then started begging me to take a video of a porno that we would both enjoy and send it to him, and I said no. When questioned, I confessed that I don't like watching people have sex and it makes me super uncomfortable. He questioned me further. How don't you find it arousing? I told him it just wasn't something I enjoyed. I made the conversation end by telling him to ask one of his friends. 
He continuously told me the lack of porn was driving him mad. The end of school year came around, Bell and Adam broke up, and Riker couldn't even hide his excitement. Things mellowed out since summer break started. He occasionally texted me asking how I was and I would respond with short answers. Around midsummer, Bell started dating her old childhood best friend, Xander. She had reconnected with him over that summer and they're still together to this day. Xander is sweet and he treats her very well. Somehow, Riker found out this information and of course, he was not happy. He texted me one day asking how I was. I said I was doing well and he asked if I was up to anything. I told him I was on vacation with Belle and he responded, no you aren't. I responded, yes I am. He then said, Belle is dead. You went on vacation with Puta Fea, aka Annabella. I snapped at him and texted back, okay look, I'm not playing this stupid game anymore. This Belle girl that you talk about never existed. You aren't fooling anybody. All you're doing is digging your own grave and showing everyone the creep you really are. He then sent a threatening response. You really shouldn't be antagonizing me right now, Melanie. I stopped responding to him. Told Belle about this and she looked up what puta fea was. Turns out, at least according to Google Translate, it means ugly bitch. At this point, Belle wasn't hurt or sad about it. She was angry. For nearly the entirety of seventh grade, she was stalked, harassed, and degraded. All because she rejected a guy because she liked someone else. The rest of summer had no communications between Riker and I and Belle was happy again, hanging out with Xander and I almost every day. Then, 8th grade started. Riker had a new target. It was me. I had never shown romantic interest in this boy, and even if I did, that didn't mean I deserved to be targeted. Now he was taking photos from my Instagram, drawing them, saying it was photos of a girl named Mel, short for my name. Everyone calls me Mel, besides him of course. Everybody at the school thought Riker and I were dating and were sleeping together, and this really took a toll on me. I was seen as the whore of the school. I told everyone who asked that it wasn't true, but he wouldn't stop. Bell confronted Riker and told him to leave me alone. He then accused her of being mad that he was over her. I tried ignoring it, but I was told by Xander and my friend, now boyfriend, Chris, that he was now making drawings of me naked. And the same cycle happened. He claimed she cut smile for me into her stomach and the next day she killed herself. He made drawings of these two. I never saw them, but I knew they existed from other people. The rest of the year was online since COVID happened, so I didn't hear anything from him. I started feeling better mentally. Little did I know, him moving towns and schools being online was not going to stop him. Ninth grade happens and he starts dating our friend, Viola, Chris's twin sister, and she claims she can see how much he's changed and that he's nice. Belle and I could see right through it, and alas, we found out we were right. Whenever we would hang out, he would be on call with her secretly and he would tell her to hurt us, telling her to call us fat and ugly or to strike at us. Viola would playfully punch our shoulders or give our arm a small tap, but Riker demanded that she hit us hard. She always refused. She blocked him and he responded by blackmailing her. I won't get into detail on that since it's very personal to her. Riker then tries getting Xander and Belle to break up since Xander is a year older and a grade ahead of Belle, and he likes to call him a predator and groomer even though that's far from the truth. Even going as far as to get one of his other friends that's obsessed with Belle to go to her house and tell her mom about Xander and make up lies. Belle's mom knew everything, including how obsessed these boys were and how Xander was very good to Belle. Riker left us alone for the remainder of 9th grade and a majority of 10th grade until I started dating Chris. Chris was no longer friends with Riker ever since he started going on about the Mel and Belle stories. Riker began texting me over Facebook telling me how horrible Chris was to his ex-girlfriend. This of course was not true, Chris had never been in a relationship before me. But since I started dating Chris, Riker will not stop throwing a wrench into my relationship to destroy us. I'm lucky that Chris is the most gentle and loyal human being and he refuses to let go. I've had so many panic attacks and breakdowns, crying to him and to Belle over Riker's harassment potentially leading to Chris leaving me. Belle thinks it's finally time to get the police involved, but I'm scared. Years of harassment of the two of us have been so damaging to our trust with guys. We got lucky to have Xander and Chris, but even then it's still scary. This has been ongoing since 7th grade and now in 11th. We still get those messages, even if it's no longer in person, it's still just as bad. So to the guy who's been obsessively stalking my best friend and I since seventh grade, let's never meet again. Dude, I just, I actually can't imagine going through there's a fucking bus. No, because that is like horrifying. And also, yeah, my throat's done. <clears throat> I'm glad that happened now though. Wait, it's not happening. It's not going away. Okay, I think it's better. I would have like, I don't know. I don't know what you do in that situation. I'm, I've also been out of high school for a very long time. So I don't know like the protocol when stuff like that happens, but I feel like going to like, a teacher or your parents or someone like telling somebody what's happening because that's horrific like the drawings are so insane same as last story i hope you know you did not deserve anything that happened to you and i'm glad you found someone i don't know if you're still with chris 
and I don't know if Bella's still with Xander, but I, I'm glad that you guys found someone who treats you well, and you're not putting up with the shit. I don't know if it's still going on. I have no idea if it's ongoing, if you're still in 11th grade. No idea, but dear God. I'm actually very proud of myself for getting through those stories. I did cough quite a bit. I did clear my throat quite a bit, but I did it. I got it done. I'm sure you noticed I didn't upload last week. Um, I'm gonna have three videos this week. The one I put out Wednesday was actually a video I filmed last week, but I was too sick to like do anything with it. I would just kind of rotted on my couch for a week. So I filmed that literally a week ago and I'm still kind of dying. So I'm hoping this sickness goes away soon. But yeah, I'll have three videos this week um, to make up for my lack of videos last week. Hopefully, Hopefully you forgive me. Oh, and also, if you guys have any stories like this that you want to share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. I love you guys. I'm going to go. I will see you in the next one. Bye. I don't think I have anything to ramble about because I've been dying. Wait, okay, here's the thing. Because I did go out over the weekend, but I thought I was better. And then I think going out made me, like, regress. Because, okay, I got sick. It started. So when you're seeing this, oh, you're seeing this on, like, a Friday. And so not this, not the Sunday that just passed, the Sunday before that, I, that's when I started feeling sick. And so uh, I was sick, really sick Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was better, Thursday I felt fine. So Thursday was the first day I like went out and did anything because I, I felt fine. And then Friday I felt fine, Saturday I felt fine, Sunday I was kind of like, ugh, I don't know, I think I'm getting sick again. And then yesterday, Monday, I'm filming this on Tuesday, Monday I was like, wait, it's back. So I don't know what's happening. I think I kind of fucked it up for myself by like doing stuff too quickly after I felt better, but whatever. It's not COVID. I took tests, um, I've taken multiple. So yeah, but it is a cold and I'm not going to leave my house until I'm better again. It's just annoying. I hate being sick. It's so boring. But yeah, so I have like nothing to tell you. I did go out. I did stuff like on Saturday, but nothing like super exciting to tell you about. Sorry. And surprisingly, I don't feel like my throat hurts that bad right now. Like, I don't feel like I the need to, like, cough so much. Like, normally if I'm sick like this and I film a video, I have to just end it and then I have a cough attack for, like, an hour because I'm just, like, so over-talking. I don't feel like that right now. So maybe I am on the up. Maybe I'm on the up. I don't know what that means. I think I'm getting better. I don't know. I don't know. But I am going to go. I love you so much. See ya.